Hey guys, this is Scholar Juno, more Jan Bing. Today we're going to be talking about the next Rattan Shield stance from General Chi Ji Guang's Rattan Shield manual, the Ji Xiao Ba Shi. Today's posture is the Di Ping Shi, or like the low even stance. But what the stance is really about is about the javelin. In the section of the Ji Xiao Xin Shu, which talks about the use of the Rattan Shield, Chi Ji Guang really emphasizes the importance of the javelin. And this is because he actually sees the shield person as a disadvantage. Like if I have the saber and a shield and I'm going against a spear, Chi Ji Guan views this as me being at a disadvantage. And by having a javelin, I'm able to have longer reach than the spear and therefore take the initiative away from the spear. The kind of the strategy that he outlines is that the shield person, as part of the Mandarin duck formation, is primarily supposed to kind of stay in front of their friends and provide cover for them. But they're also using the shield, you're supposed to carry, you know, two javelins, it says in the text. So you have your two javelins, and whenever you find an opportunity, you throw it at the spearman, right? And then you can rush in as the spearman has to react, because even if you miss, the spearman still has to react to you. He also says that you shouldn't recklessly throw the javelin, and that you should try and actually hit whatever you're aiming at. Unfortunately, Chi Ji Guang doesn't give specific dimensions for the exact length and weight of the javelin, but he does say that it should be heavier at the front, and it should taper down and be thinner at the end. And some depictions of the javelin actually show a second uh, blade at the end of the javelin. And I actually planned on making, you know, a javelin with a sharp point and, you know, going out and throwing it at some targets. Unfortunately, I ordered a pretty cheap spare point and it came bent, so I wasn't able to do that. Uh, so I just threw on my sparring uh, spearhead here and that has a different advantage because now I can actually use that sparring and throw it at people. <laughs> but the main thing about the javelin is that it's supposed to be weighted towards the spearhead and this allows you to throw it. And this is the same weight distribution that we find in modern javelins and like, you know, Olympic javelin throwing. In this manual, Chi Ji Guang also says that whenever you're using the javelin, you need to have the saber uh, ready to, to be deployed almost immediately. And he describes a way to do that, which actually contradicts some of the depictions. In the depictions, it looks like they're kind of holding the saber like this, um, which is very difficult for me to do because I have this bar here. Even though during the Ming Dynasty, most depictions of Rattan shields, there's a couple that show the inside of the shield and they actually lack that bar. So early Rattan shields likely just had the two loops and you could hold something in your hand like this. However, it's also not the most secure and it's not what Chi Ji Guang described. Though Chi Ji Guang says that you actually need to place the saber horizontally behind the shield and then it needs to sit on your arm and be secured by the wrist. And I interpret it to mean something kind of like this. Now this is very similar to how you hold a saber in the beginning of modern kung fu forms and stuff. So I think that there might be something to this. And this really secures the saber back behind me and it's safe. It's up against my, it's kind of tucked in the crook of my elbow. And in addition to that, I can also quickly grab it and come in with a cut. So this is a much better way to hold the saber, in my opinion, than holding it point down. Now let's go over the actual text for the Di Ping Shi, which is the stance that we use whenever we throw the javelin. The first line of text says, Zi zhen zhen dui di shi ye, which means that this is the real stance that you use when you're actually facing the enemy, right? So when you're actually facing the enemy, when you're not just sparring or anything, <laughs> you're going to need the javelin. So the next line says, Yong tui bu xu yao dai biao yi gen. Uh, yong tui bu means using pushing steps. And this could be interpreted to mean that you're pushing in it forward on the enemy. So if you want to push forward on the enemy, you need to dai biao yi gen, which means carry a javelin, carry a javelin with you. After this, it says shen zai pai nei biao bu qi jin. Shen zai pai nei just means keep the body behind the shield. So don't expose yourself and open your shield up as you're throwing, right? You try to keep your shield in front of you. And Biaobu uh, Jin means the feet and the javelin move together. And then lastly, it says Bai Fa Bai Zhong, which means a hundred throws, a hundred hits. And basically, you need to miss less than 1% of the time whenever you're throwing the javelin. Now let's go outside and I'll show you how my interpretation of this dance works. If we look at different versions of the Rattan Shield Manual and military text from the Ming Dynasty, we can see that the Di Ping Shi, or the javelin throwing stance, is the same in almost all of them. However, the notable exception here is the Wu Bei Zhi. Uh, the Wu Bei Zhi actually shows that you're in kind of a lunging position. And I believe that this might imply that these are different phases of the movement. Because whenever you're throwing something, 
you usually want to be throwing your body weight behind it, which can frequently look like a type of lunging step. This is something that both Olympic javelin throwers do, as well as baseball throwers. You take a big step and then you bring your back leg in as you throw your body weight forward. So that's what I do in my interpretation of this movement. I start in low, crouch behind the shield, and then I kind of take the lunge step. And then as I pull my back foot in, I then throw the javelin and release it. And I try to stay behind the shield. And then after this, the idea is to make sure that you still keep your shield in front of you, but rush in on the spear. And be careful because the spear might recover and try to come back at you. Alright everybody, so that's my interpretation of the deeping shirt. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to stay sharp.